Thank you, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, present today. Um, I will only speak today about uh, Advent Energy, but uh, you can look at our platform to see other announcements on cortical as they occur. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, PEP11 is uh, offshore Sydney. Uh, it's a gas project and we uh, also propose to do uh, CCS uh, research during the uh, drilling of the next well. The project has potential national significance. It addresses both the uh, forecast gas shortage on the East Coast and the objective uh, of uh, net zero emissions on an international basis. We've committed both uh, to uh, NZE and also to all gas from the project to the Australian domestic supply. When you look at carbon capture and storage, it's been um, recognised by the Australian government as a key part of the technology to enable us to meet our carbon reduction uh, objectives. Uh, it's also been identified by the IEA as the only large scale mitigation option that uh, can deliver international CO2 emissions reductions to meet climate goals in 2050. Uh, where it is, is the closest to one third of all of Australia's CO2 emissions in that arc around Sydney, Newcastle, Wollongong. And uh, if you put it in uh, real estate terms, location, 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 and we are the closest uh, point source for a storage capacity for the very reason that you see a gas capacity. And, and if you look at uh, Western Australia and look at the Cooper Basin and the Santos project, where you find the gas is likely where you're going to have the uh, carbon storage areas. And that's exactly what's happening. And, and, and in fact, uh, carbon dioxide can then be used to replace gas when that's extracted from the area. In New South Wales, 300,000 jobs rely on gas supply and gas supplies around 1.3 million households and 33,000 businesses. And that's 84% of the uh, state's industrial gas load. So we have a looming gas shortfall, and I'm going to put that in context of an international basis. Next slide, please. So uh, the quotes here are from the New South Wales Business Chamber, and it sets out the uh, real issues here. And the map is from that same presentation by New South Wales Chamber. And you see here the uh, gas pipeline network, but there's some key things that are going on here. And that is uh, New South Wales imports 98% of its uh, gas requirements and in action on gas and energy security are now holding the future of the New South Wales to ransom and threatening employment losses. Victoria has just released its gas substitution roadmap. And in that it notes that 50 years, the Bass Strait fields have supplied gas into this network that you see here. And however, the Victorian government has also just confirmed that there will be a 43% reduction forecast by AEMO between 2021 through to 2025. I'll put that in context. If we can go to the next slide, please. So um, uh, the importance of that is recognised by the MOU that was signed between the New South Wales government and the federal government, under which the federal government was to give a funding of 2 billion to increase the energy supply and reduce emissions in New South Wales. And this included a specific target to bring 70 petajoule a year into that marketplace. There has in fact been only one input into that uh, 70 petajoules a year. And we look to this in terms of the total gas supply market. In other words, what we have here is the New South Wales government that's just turned off 77% of onshore licenses. And what's occurring now is what's going to continue to occur into the future. We're seeing gas price spikes in the Australian 
uh, gas market where there's high demand during the Australian winter and in turn high demand during the northern summer. And then you reverse that. When we get into our um, into the other uh, period, then you get high demand uh, during the uh, uh, Australian summer and uh, uh, European. What that really means is that gas prices in the northern hemisphere have just spiked to $16 a gigajoule or a BTU. And uh, that isn't getting any better. In fact, if you look at what's just occurred in um, uh, Ireland and in uh, New Zealand, New Zealand had blackouts last week as a result of critical instability in its uh, power uh, network. Ireland faced the same issues. New Zealand's now looking to import coal and LNG, but the trouble is Ireland's looking to import LNG. Europe's looking to import gas through the Russian pipeline, and there is insufficient gas into, from Russia into that European Union, and there are other supply constraints out of Europe. So don't expect to see uh, gas prices on the international marketplace drop anytime soon. And we can't rely in Australia for that source to bring uh, price, gas in at a price that makes it work for the rest of uh, the Australian East Coast gas, gas to market. And that instability of power means that AEMO was intervened 250 times into the electricity network compared to 20 times, three times earlier. So Australia has got a problem and we're seeing that in, in the context. I'll just go to the next slide, please. So we have a project here with a prospective uh, five TCF. To put that in context, the Bass Strait fields have supplied eight TCF of gas over the last 60 odd years. And so prospectively, uh, the offshore project has both that capacity to give a solution to the gas supply crisis and a solution to the carbon capture and storage. And what we're waiting for is the current application to NOPTA to enable us to go to NOPSEMA and go through the environmental uh, final approval process. And we're in the process of, as you'll see on the announcements of doing all of those steps that it, are necessary to take us through uh, the preparation of environmental plan. We have two new gas-fired power stations that are going into that uh, electricity network to replace coal-fired power stations as they get shut down, and they have to give that baseload firming generation. Next slide, please. So where are we in context? There's Newcastle, we're about uh, 30 k's South southeast of Newcastle and 27 k's off the coast. In context, that's right next door. And in an industrial sense, the capability to take a pipeline from the project at the Baleen Well with the Sea Bell uh, as the first gas uh, and CCS planned uh, well on that area, then in fact, we have a capacity to. Uh, meet those requirements that I've just outlined in a fairly short period of time. And you can see that we move into industrial areas for, in the prospective sense in terms of where we can take that gas. Uh, next slide, please. So the drill target at Baleen is 6,000 acres, 25 square kilometres. It is feasible that one well can drain that entire area. And this is out of the um, Marlin report. So in fact, uh, in the reports that were given by Santos and Amplex and others, they gave around one and a half TCF in this drill target at Baleen alone. Next slide, please. Uh, the work that was done by Geoscience Australia showed that, in fact, gas comes out of the sea floor uh, on points all along that New South Wales coast. In other words, this is a gas-prone basin, and what we're seeing is gas 
uh, coming out even uh, right the way through. But if you look uh, into the area with the deep blue offshore Newcastle, that's where the gas is sourced out of the uh, Newcastle syncline. And you're seeing, in fact, uh, substantial continental shelf collapse areas where that gas has caused instability in that area over geological age. Uh, and, uh, and I'll go through to that in the next slide, please. Um, so you can actually see offshore um, uh, south of Newcastle, the gas coming off the sea floor. Why is that so? Because if you look at lower left, your screen, you'll see where the top of the structure is and where that structure fills to spill, then in fact, it comes around and, and outside. And that's analogous to other areas offshore Norway and uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Next slide, please. And uh, it's those elements that um, uh, give us the capacity to say that gas chimneys have been observed where you have uh, pock marks at the surface and that's what's shown in that other area and active seeps, just as we're looking at here, and migrated hydrocarbons are key indicators of ongoing hydrocarbon generation. And in surveys internationally, where uh, you have positive geochem as we've had here, uh, then 80% uh, of the wells that are drilled in those areas resulted in commercial um, hydrocarbon uh, areas. Um, next slide, please. Um, that's the top of baleen in the sediment sampling that we did, and that just shows uh, light end uh, gas fractions, which is really what uh, is a reflection of what's coming up from uh, much deeper in as much as two kilometres or three kilometres down. Next slide, please. Um, when uh, CSIRO Petroleum Research looked at this area, they said you have multi multiple attributes of uh, seismic there that show uh, where you have gas reservoirs appear as bright spot reflections. And I won't go into the others, those slides are there, but that's essentially what you're seeing in these gas targets that we're looking at. Next slide, please. So uh, this is the Tim Berg report. And you see here where the uh, drill target is that we're going at Berlin. And you can see trap that apparent uh, gas is reservoired at an intermediate one to two seconds time depth, which is the drill target we're looking at. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, we propose to drill a gas exploration well at sea blue. We look to, to simultaneously do carbon sequestration research. Uh, and because of its proximity, we're next to the major emission sources and we're ideally placed to meet those net zero emissions with all things coming into fruition. There's presently no confirmed onshore geological storage sites in New South Wales. And uh, if you look at uh, our announcements platform, you'll see where Professor Cook has most recently presented on that this week in uh, on an online seminar. So uh, we we have a significant opportunity to meet major challenges uh, being addressed by Australia at the moment, and uh, I'm now happy to take questions. And thank you for listening. Thanks, David. Um, I remember speaking um, previously to a, a, an oil and gas analyst about this asset. And he said you actually can go out there on a boat on a clear day. You can see the gas bubbling to the surface. Um, he said it has been around before this asset. And what's the, what's the challenges in terms of commercialising this this time around? So um, th there are challenges and the challenge is to be able to bring this to subject to a successful result. It's, it's to bring it to uh, the market within a time frame that meets those other challenges. When you look at a CO2 capacity, because there is that pipeline network that already exists right through up into the Newcastle industrial area, it is quite feasible to twin a CO2 extraction pipeline 
to that uh, pipeline. In other words, you're using the same area without having to go through uh, a, a sourcing the gas area, sourcing the pipeline network space to bring this through to fruition. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, of course, there are some people within the community that oppose that, uh, the project on environmental grounds. And we believe, however, that because this is a gas project and because of its national significance and its significance to New South Wales, it's critically important. And we're going through the environmental process and in Nopsema, we have a regulator that is amongst the best in the world. And we're quite happy to go through that process in terms of meeting the environmental standards, just as the 3000 wells that have been drilled around Australia in the offshore area over the last 60 years have. Thank you. David, another question here. Um, why is the second application for PEP2 um, still awaiting further information? Um, th that's a matter for uh, uh, NOPTA to answer, but we, in fact, if you look, um, we have one application and then because uh, under uh, the COVID um, position, we could make an application for a further exemption, then in fact, we made that application, 50 of those also were made by other companies and they were granted. But because we've already got that first application in that second application isn't necessary to be dealt with. And I think that that's probably, at the moment, that's probably more the answer. 